to uh, be bringing on our next guest, Mr. John Meyer. Higher. Higher, sorry, running for uh, the Minnesota State House. Yes. John, Long thank you day. for uh, coming on the show. It's good well, to see you. Thanks for having me. I remember uh, 4th of July, what was it, 2011, where we were at Bob Murphy's yep, house. Yep, uh, yep. He makes some of the best ribs you'd ever want to eat in your life. Yeah, and, uh, good chicken, too. It so. was about 110 degrees that day, I think. But we well, now you have to get my stomach going. I know, just I'm thinking I'm, about them. Yeah. Well, I, 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 <laughs> I think I, it might be a rib joint for dinner tonight. I, I was at Central Park on the 4th of July in Roseville this year uh, doing a campaign bit, and and Bob was like, I'm sending you a care package. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he should... He, Big, big thing of ribs and chicken. It was great. So is is Bob, is he in your district? Then? No, he's actually okay. in Anthony. Oh, that's what I yeah, thought. That's exactly. what I thought. Exactly. But Bob used to be one of my vice chairs as I, I was the chair of 66B. And okay. They, they broke us up when they redistricted, so... So what is your district and what neighborhoods are uh, The dis of? District 66A right now uh, is 70% of Roseville and then Falcon Heights, Lauderdale, and three precincts in the extreme northwestern St. Paul. Mm -hmm. And I've seen you know, quite a bit of activity from your campaign. It looks like you've been going to a lot of community events and some parades and whatnot. Uh, how has everything been going with that? Is it a lot of work? Is it more work than what you thought it was going to be? It, it, it's every bit as much work as I, I ever dreamed it could possibly be. Uh, it, it's it's keeping me very, very busy. Uh, we're getting to a lot of community things. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a great one tonight. Uh, uh, Bartley from Bent Brew Stillery is uh, doing a, a event tonight and uh, asked me if I was coming. I said, sure. And, and he's, he tweeted out to about 1,700 people that I'll be there. So Nice. <laughs> what is the event? Uh, it's called... Uh, 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 heat up your life. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a hot sauce festival. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, hot I, sauce and ribs and chicken. Well, yeah, <laughs> it, it's got a couple food trucks, and they'll be pouring one of their beers through ghost chilies. Mm. So, if you really like hot food, be a good place to go. So, John, have you been a Republican your whole life? Pretty much, uh, uh, probably uh, since, since early college days, mm -hmm. uh, I started seeing the light and, and realizing that, you know, maybe we don't want to pay for everything in the entire free world, mm -hmm. you know? So uh, that's, that's probably true. And, and I've been an activist in the party for about the last 10 or 12 years. Uh, I've spent quite a bit of time as a vice chair, a deputy chair, or a chair of, uh, of a house district. Mm -hmm. And how long have you lived in St. Paul for? Uh, we bought our house almost exactly 28 years ago. Okay. So you've seen, uh, can you just uh, let everyone know about some of the changes? I think that's about how long I've lived in St. <laughs> Paul. Um, I've, only, I, I've only lived in the area for 25 years. Yeah. I'm sorry I'm the young guy here. Well, I tell people that in the campaign that I've lived within one mile of the state fairgrounds for uh, about... 54 out of 57 years. Okay. So uh, I, I've lived in that area a lot. You know, grew up in Roseville, went to Roseville High School. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm kind of connected with Roseville, but then St. Paul as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, the changes in that community, uh, in, in my part of St. Paul, the changes are very slow. Mm. Uh, there isn't a lot of... Uh, uh, there's, there's not a lot of diversity in the neighborhood. There's a little, but not a lot. Uh, the school systems uh, have gotten more focused on, on non-fundamentals of education, non-reading, writing, arithmetic, and, and more into, uh, I, I described it as social programming. Um, so, so th that's a big change in the area. So, as I've asked the other candidates who are on today, two, you know, two questions: What's your background, and what made you decide to wake up one day and say, "I'm going to run for office"? That's a that's a great question. Uh, I am a retired religious educator. I worked for uh, a variety of, of Catholic churches throughout the whole metro area, and uh, I for about part time and full time, but. 34 years, something like that. And uh, I was offered a chance to take an early out retirement uh, in, uh, in June. And I did that. And I was kind of expecting to have a nice relaxing summer, you know? Well, so much for that. Well, yeah. And, and a couple of uh, 
pretty influential people twist my arm a little bit and, and said, you need to run. Uh, and uh, so I made the decision to run. And uh, it, it, here I am. <laughs> so who, who are you running against? Alice Hausman. Okay. Uh, Alice Hausman is a, is a shameless uh, supporter of, of uh, light rail. And she's also uh, a, uh, the chair of the bonding committee. So she is the person who pushes through this ridiculous uh, level of spending that our state constantly goes upon. Uh, and and this, some of the things in the bonding bill are just, you, you scratch your head and go, are you kidding me? We're, we're buying that? on credit no less. Mm -hmm. So uh, those are some of the reasons. I, I tell people the reason I'm running is because of my children and my grandchildren because they're going to be stuck with the bills for the stuff we're buying about. So buying your, your opponent, w correct me if I'm wrong, wasn't she instrumental in the heated uh, gun debate that took place uh, a year and a half ago right around Sandy Hook time? Well, there, there was one then and then there was one last year and there probably, hopefully she won't be there so there won't be one next year. Uh, she is a, a, a very anti-Second Amendment person. Mm. She, she wants to regulate guns. She wants to uh, do a lot of things. One of them was uh, she wanted to, to have a 10-round maximum on, on a magazine for a, for a weapon. Uh, and then another one that she just introduced this year that she authored was that she wanted everybody to have to pay an annual registration fee for every gun that they own. Uh, so essentially, it's like a tax to own a gun. So uh, has the NRA endorsed you? Um, they they haven't. I don't know if the uh, the, the Minnesota Gun Owners uh, Pack has endorsed me. Uh, NRA doesn't usually endorse at that at a lower level race like this. Mm -hmm. uh, and I got an A minus from Gokra. So you know, I've, I talked to uh, you know a few people that I would consider fairly liberal. Uh, some of them are, are elected officials in Minneapolis, the city of Minneapolis, um, but they are actually strong uh, private gun rights ownership advocates because sure. some of the neighborhoods, there's, uh, what do you call it, house raids or when somebody comes into your house and uh, there's break-ins and, and things of that sort. And they actually look at guns as a way to dissuade this type of activity. And there's numbers that actually back this up. And imagine there's a few crimes here and there in your neighborhood as well. Um, what about the the people in your district? Don't they do they advocate Second Amendment right to uh, carry or? For the most part, in in the in the the St. Paul portion of the district, there's not a real big Second Amendment push. There are a few people that are pretty pretty Second Amendment mm -hmm. positive, but Roseville tends to be pretty pretty Second Amendment oriented. Mm -hmm. uh, we're we're a fairly low crime area. Uh, just because we're kind of cut off from the rest of St. Paul by ra by train tracks and and a variety of other things, uh, you know, and the park kind of cuts everything off, Como Park. So mm -hmm. so we're sort of isolated up in the corner of St. Paul. Mm -hmm. uh, so so there there the, the the Second Amendment thing isn't uh, a major issue on the minds of the people in the district. So since we uh, talked uh, with about these issues with um, the other gentleman that came sure. on today's show, I just wanted to quickly ask about your position. If you were elected, if you were representative uh, during the Vikings stadium debate, would you have voted to support uh, uh, the taxpayers paying a portion of the Vikings stadium? I would not have voted that the state taxpayers would pay for it. Uh, I believe that if a, if a if the people in an area would like to have a stadium, uh, and they want to put together a tax package for, you know, Hennepin County or Minneapolis or, well, like when St. Paul, they did the XL Energy Center. That was a guaranteed thing by the taxpayers of St. Paul in particular. Uh, if, if the local municipality wants a stadium and wants to put a tax forth, fine, but the state shouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. that's, that's where I draw the line. Uh, someone who lives in International Falls or Austin or something like that has no business having to pay for stuff that only benefits the Metro. And what about the uh, anti-bullying legislation? Would you have voted for that? I would not have. Um, the the anti-bullying thing uh, is, 
it really labels kids as, as being troublemakers, uh, and it's very easy for teachers to push kids into that labeling, mm -hmm. and, and that's that's just not a good thing. Uh, in terms of education as a whole, I, I advocate uh, educational choice. That if if we, we need to support the the charter school uh, provisions and and get kids out of the traditional educational s mainstream, we may need to go all the way to vouchers and get kids into private schools uh, and give people full choice of their educational options. And then your thoughts on minimum wage. Should we have a minimum wage? And if so, what should it be at? Is $15 too <laughs> much? Is $9.50 <laughs> adequate? Well, I, I, I've seen what some of the 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 cause the, the effects of minimum wage can be in our, in the district that I live in, uh, we have a, a lot of uh, we have I, I can point to four or five long-standing businesses things people that have been you know family-owned things that have been open for 40 50 years, and suddenly they all closed and and uh, the business taxes are one reason, but the other reason is minimum wage. Uh, when you ratchet the the minimum wage up too quickly, I mean, I understand that that yeah, maybe you want to have a minimum wage, but when you ratchet it up too quickly, when you go when you make the big jump within a year and a half from from seven and a quarter all the way up to nine, uh, it's too much of a shock to the business system, and they can't they can't manage to keep in business uh, while eating that that cost because they'd have to run their costs up so much uh, that that it would cause people to not want to shop there what about uh, employment in your district um, are you uh, you know there's there's there seems to be a big riff if you look at the governor's uh, positions on the economy you, know, you have governor Dayton stating that you know he inherited the recession and that things are improving and then you have the other side that are saying this is the slowest recovery from a recession in American history and people are basically accepting this new normal of, of low job growth and low wages. Um, what is your feel uh, on the state of the Minnesota economy? Can we do better and how? We need to uh, invest in bringing businesses into Minnesota. That, I think that's a really key thing. Uh, I think too often we, we he, the governor points at jobs and, and he, he looks at public sector jobs as being so important. And no, the private sector jobs are where the growth of the economy is. And, and we need to, to bring businesses to Minnesota. We need to support those businesses in Minnesota instead of chasing them out to South Dakota or Texas or wherever they're moving jobs to. We, we are running companies out of state because we have the third highest corporate income t or income tax in the entire country. And we can't continue to do that. We have to support those businesses. We have to give them incentives to move into Minnesota instead of out. Uh, and, and that's really key and urgent. Uh, and there's a lot of opportunities for growth in the whole state as a whole. One of the big ones is, is the mining industry up north. Uh, I spent a week up in Ely on vacation and ended up doing a lot of research about that, that topic in particular. And the environmentalists that, that go on about how terrible it's going to be, that they really don't have their facts. I mean, they really, really don't have them. And the facts are that, that the water they pump back into the ground when it's all done is going to be cleaner than the water they took out. It's that simple. But yet we, we want to hold that off, you know. They, they keep saying, well, we need to be really careful. Yeah, you do need to be careful, but our state's regulations are tough. And if that mining company can abide by those, God bless them. Let's, let's do that mining and get those jobs into Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And then your thoughts on uh, Minsure. You know, Minsure seems to be a big thing in the public discourse these days. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing we really haven't touched on at all. So your thoughts on Minsure? Minsure, we're, we're stuck with this, this Obamacare mandate, you know. And, and the state has to, we either have to go with the federal or do our own. That's, that's the, the bottom line. But the problem is we hired a bunch of people who had never managed a health care system before that are attempting to organize a health care system, and they're doing a miserable job. They have a, a rotten website. 
when someone has a kid, they can't uh, get the kid added onto the policy for four months because it just takes the bureaucratic paperwork and all that. If you had professionals running that system, they could do that in a day. Uh, we need to hire people that know what they're doing. So Jeff Johnson, he, he came out uh, recently, just last week, with a news conference, media conference, uh, basically stating that uh, Governor Dayton, Mark Dayton, was lying about the Minsher numbers. You know, they came out with a four, that saying that 4 the average yeah. rate increase would be 4.5%. Uh, preferred one dropped out, which was equivalent, I believe, over half of the miniature coverage no market. Coverage. Um, they've recently announced that their uh, rates, some of them are going up as high as like 40 or 50 percent for some of their right. uh, their customers, which is a huge increase from, from one year uh, for a policy. Uh, Jeff Johnson said Mark Dayton was lying about the numbers. Uh, would you agree with Jeff? Absolutely. Uh, I, it, it's one of those things that... Uh, when you say, yeah, the average increase is just this much, well, yeah, if if you fall into this tiny little wedge of demographic, it'll be 4.5 percent. But for everybody else, you know, you're you're going to be paying like crazy, mm -hmm. and, and and part of that is the ineptitude of the system, and part of that is is the the the, the fact that it's it's a one size fits all healthcare where everybody's covered for everything that could possibly happen to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that the, the math that they used, I, I looked at some of the uh, different viewpoints, and it just seemed overly simplistic as far as how they calculated this 4.5% average increase. They, you know, the, the, they used, they didn't, uh, they didn't average out the, the pool numbers, they just took it across the board and did the most simplest Mm -hmm. uh, equation that they possibly could. So as our time is winding it down, is. if anybody wants to get a hold of you, how can they do so? Um, it's uh, hireforhouse.com. Uh, they can connect with me right off the website. Uh, it'll connect to email or Twitter or Facebook or whatever. Uh, and uh, we're, we're getting good response from people. And uh, Sounds good. Thing. John Hire, thank you for coming on the show. I'll see you at Bob Murphy's for ribs next thank time. You. Never, never know. Thank never you. Know. May God bless you. May God bless America and via con Dios.